So we here at the Advocacy Project have been reflecting our team about how we collaborate between different types of advocate, especially how we provide seamless service to the individual, so that if the duty is triggered for Care Act advocacy, there's not the need to tell someone's story again a second time, but they can benefit from using the same advocate. We've also talked about collaboration here with the local authority, and that's from the point of view of really enhancing awareness of the different advocacy roles and ensuring appropriate referrals at the earliest possible opportunity. So we were providing paid RPR support to an individual in a residential care placement. The paid RPR raised a safeguarding alert and the RPR was able to proactively say to the local authority, look, I'm dual trained, I can support this person through the safeguarding inquiry. And part of that inquiry focused on the advocate supporting the individual to disclose what he disclosed to them to the police so that they could investigate. And the individual wanted to lead on that with advocacy support. And that happened as part of the inquiry. Our client reflected with us after the process on how much he had wanted to play a role in speaking to the police and how with the support of an advocate, he felt empowered. Now also in this case, there was the need to look at protective measures within the residential placement. And the Care Act advocate was able, again, to proactively say to the social worker, the local authority has the power to instruct an IMCA to support the client around whether those protective measures are in his best interests. So it's another example of how we're looking at collaboration and continuity for a client and seamless advocacy, whereby we can proactively say where the advocacy duty is and ensure there's no gaps in advocacy availability for the individual. I think within the sector, and within advocacy especially, we need to think about our role, not only our broader role under the Care Act, but our specific role within safeguarding. And we're thinking about this and starting to do this here at the Advocacy Project, putting together packages of training, um, flowcharts to support the local authority to understand what the advocacy role is in safeguarding across the different advocacy disciplines, and to make sure that we're leading on providing advocacy for that person's journey through safeguarding.